So guys, this is where it all goes wrong. Fuck. I fucking have two girls telling me they missed the period a week apart. Actually, days apart. Fuck. Dude, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Ugly Truth Nail, and I'm back again with one more video. I mean, you're looking at the title, you're looking at the thumbnail, and you're realizing that it's another story time. So I'm calling this one Scandalous Sex Capades. What today's episode is about, it was a time when I was dating two girls at the same time. And yeah, man, that was a very <laughs> interesting time in my life. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me take you back to a time where I was an elite fuck boy, play boy, bad boy, and I was just out here giving the D to anyone without discrimination, you know, because I was reckless as fuck. I was a trash dude as of note. I'm the reason why trash guys exist, because I was trash back then, and I've ill-treated a bunch of women, including the two girls that I'm about to tell y'all, because I was dating them simultaneously. So, and I generally thought it would be a good story for my memoirs to be reckless and do what the fuck I want because I'm a rock star. Do what I want, follow my dreams. So the two girls that I was getting with, uh, let's call the one L and let's call the one T by the initials, right? Because those are the initials. So let's get into who did I meet first? Who did I meet first? I, I met T first, right? Just to give you a short description of T. T was, you know, she was a dark skin, thick mommy, you know, she she was Petty McBuns. She was the type of girl that had the kind of booty that you want to talk to. And you know, she had like a small kind of waist, she had hips. And if you know me, you know that I, I've got a weakness for women with hips. I love hips on a woman, you know, small waist hips. That's just my cut, you know. And she had like a bit of a bougie vibe to her, you know. She was all fancy smancy. You know, all about her, hair on fleek, eyes on fleek, everything on fleek. She was that girl. So she had like a slate queen vibe to her because, you know, she was the type of girl that worked. She was a working girl and she could afford her life. You know, the only problem with her is that she lived very far. She lived in Pretoria. And then going into Elle. So Elle was more of a nurturer. You know, she was, she was thick. You, you know, she had a, a nice wreck to her. She was like a nice mudge and boob. She was also, she had like a nice bump to her, the nice thick thighs, you know, good for the winner. Overall, she challenged me intellectually because of what she studied. So she was a very intricate person to be around. And she was in the east of Johannesburg. I forgot what they call that place, but she was in the east of Johannesburg. So going back to T, how I met T, right? So T grew up in the same neighborhood as one of my friends, right? My boy was like, no, come through, let's hang out. And this was in December, I think, five, six years ago, right? And yeah, we went to some party called Okapi. So yeah, anyway, bumped into T at Okapi. We hung out, you know, she was with her other friend. Her friend was a bad, bad, like she was like a, like a nice petite kind of girl, but next to her, you know, we could tell her, ish, yeah, no, anyway. So I was more interested in T's friend. He had a boyfriend. So I was like, ah, no, I'm not gonna go into that because girls with boyfriends tend to be a lot of work because you have to convince them otherwise. And I was not about convincing anybody otherwise because like I said, I was a community service. I was giving the D to anybody that I thought could get it. I ended up getting up, getting with T. So T and I hung out later on. We ended up at one of my friend's place. I remember that night I was drunk out of my mind. Like I was totally smashed that night that I was even lazy to even attempt hitting it, let alone making out with her. And she was like clinging onto my arm. Every time I would pass out, she would wake me up. So yeah, and she actually admitted that night that yo, had I been that guy that tried to smash that first night, she wouldn't have been interested in me. So basically I hit her with a reverse psychology. Instead of showing her that yo, this is what I want, I switched it up and I just relaxed and then it made her want me even more. Anyway, following morning, uh, took her to the route train station with my friend and she went back to Pretoria, but I got her numbers before. And then, yeah, man, I think I took like three, four days to head up. Then moving to L, right? 
Uh, so, L, I also met her the same December I met T. I met L back at her home where she grew up because what had happened was when our friend's friend invited us over to come spend uh, New Year's Eve at their place going into New Year's, right? So I, was, I remember this one time I was sitting at the table by myself smoking her and Elle decided to come join me and then we just had like a good conversation the whole night where we it was just great banter, you know, it was uh, intellectually stimulating, you know, and, you know, we had a good night, we exchanged numbers. I didn't kiss her, I didn't try to smash that night as well, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I think I called her a week later. I remember I remember it was a week later because when I called her, she tried to play that game that, oh, no, I forgot who this is. I don't remember. And I'm like, girl, please, you spent half of your New Year's Eve talking to me. How the hell would you forget me? Girls. <laughs> Flipping girls. They like playing these mind games. Anyway. So my first date with T, right? T and I went to Rosebank. We went to uh, Mike's Kitchen. We had a nice old uh, lunch. And yeah, she dropped some bars on me. She was she actually told me that, she was honest from the get-go and told me that, yo, I am dating someone right now, but I'm gonna drop them so I can be with you because I don't see that going anywhere. And I'm like, God damn. I'm like, okay, girl, do what you feel like you need to do. And we take it from there. And then I think our second date with T, but obviously since she lives in Pretoria, I live in Joburg. I didn't want her having to come here for like two minutes and then having to leave. So I remember I booked us into some cheap ass hotel. <laughs> she didn't like, had a good time. Went back to the hotel and then, yeah, we just chilled. I didn't even smash that night again. I think it was because of the place that we were at because like I said, she's a very bougie, fancy schmancy kind of girl. Like, oh yeah, I think it was around the time where the 90 day rule was a real thing and I think she had, she wanted to put me on the 90 day rule. <laughs> Little did she know who she's dealing with. So second meetup, we didn't smash. Third meetup. Actually, let me save the third meetup. Anyway, going back to L. So L and I, first date, we went to we went to Mall of the South, uh, Mug and Bane, right? Man, uh, L was so super attracted to me that if it were up to me, I probably would have hit it at the mall. That's how crazy it is. That is how you know, into me she was, you know, because the things I did there, you know, but then again, that was a crazy time for me because uh, I was such a horn dog back then, you know, it, like literally could happen anywhere from a uh, freaking bathroom, changing rooms, parking lots, cars, it didn't matter. Like I was just sex crazy at the time. Uh, so yeah, we had a good time and then we went our separate ways. It's fine. And then this is where it gets complicated. L hits me up this one time and on some, hey, um, I want some personal time with you. And I'm like, okay, sure, what did you have in mind? She was like, no, nah, I was thinking we booked at a ho at some lodge. Yeah, no, nah, that lodge was a bit nice. That was a very nice, it had like an African feel to it, but it was a very dope lodge. It's somewhere in North Riding, I think. It was called, yeah, I'm not gonna tell what it's called. Anyway, just know that we were at a lodge. So we walk into the room and I realize there's like flower pads all over the bed. And I'm like, why the hell is this going on? And then all to realize that the reason why I remember which month this happened, this was in Feb, this was the following month. And I remember the weekend before that, I think the weekend that we were approaching was gonna be Valentine's weekend. And, I, and we booked like on a Tuesday. So we were there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we had to leave Friday because I had to go back to work. Uh, and I remember this because I asked my cousin, hey, if you sell a, if you book out with your girlfriend during the week, right? And then um, weekend, it's Valentine. Does it count as spending Valentine? And then she was just like, yeah, it does. And then I was like, oh, God damn, this was a trick. But anyway, moving, moving on, I went to refresh real quickly. And as soon as I came out, ah, got busy with L. And we got at it all three days or was it two? Yeah, all two, three days, right? Like we went hard. Like, we went so hard to a point where really, from get go, we went raw. And she kind of lied to me. Not <sighs> really lied to me, ladies and gentlemen. She told me that she was on prevention. And then all the, during that entire time, she's busy taking vitamins so that I don't realize that she forgot to take her pill. And then when we leave the lodge, 
That's when she starts confessing that. Remember I told you that I was on pill. I haven't been taking my pills. I actually forgot them at home. And then since I know a bit about pills, I told her what she needed to do I mean, when she got home, moving forward. Going back to T, right? So T one day also hits me up. She's like, yo, I want some personal time. This is a week later after me hanging out with L at the lodge. A week later, the weekend. She hits me up with some, yo, I want some time. And I'm like, okay, come to Joburg. And now I can't book at that old place that I booked at that was cheap because she's bougie, she's lani, you know, and I just spent a lot of money on the other one. So now I have to improvise. So I got a lodge closer to Southgate. Not gonna, make, not gonna mention names if you know, one that's closer to Southgate, not the yellow one, but up the road, that one. We are booked into the hotel, we get to the hotel, we chill. And then we just chilling, we just hanging out. And then uh, what had happened was, she decides to go through my phone. And I remember there was this one hun that was blowing up my phone that was not Elle, another girl. And she kept telling me, yo, I miss you, I miss you, I wanna see you. I'm like, nah girl, I'll make time whenever I got time, I just don't have time. And then T saw that message and then she started throwing tantrums and then got insecure, did the whole girl thing. And I'm like, nah, this girl wants me. I don't, I haven't seen her, but she just wants me. Little did I know I actually smashed that girl like a couple of months prior. It's just that I was playing hard to get. So guys, this is where it all goes wrong. Fuck. So fun, me and T are fighting and then we decided that, hey, let's go out. So where did we go out to? We went to Summit Strip Club that night. I remember we had a jolly good time. Guys, some shit went down at that club, but that's a story for another day. I will decide if I, I, I will tell the story or not. So yeah, summer goes crazy. Uh, T and I get drunk off tequila, like it ta killed us. So we left the strip club, went back to the lodge, but we are so drunk out of our mind. So guys, the concept for T also coming to Joburg so she can hang out. The idea was that we're gonna get tested before we have sex, right? Ha, that night, yeah, no. We, we got so hammered that night that I was wearing a jumpsuit. She was so drunk out of her mind that I had to help her out of a jumpsuit. And then obviously I helped her out. And then she got into the bed. And then, but a bam, but a bow. Hey man, we went at it. We went at it raw. <laughs> we went at it raw and I guess that's that. And then in the morning, that's when we do. We went at it again, but this time I used protection in the morning. I don't know why, that was stupid. Uh, so yeah, in the morning, that's when we go to clinics. We bought a bunch of HIV testing kits. She had to go to Coral Reef and hang out with her friends. And I had to go back to work. Uh, and yeah, man, we tested, found out that we both negative. Shwaka, it was a good time. So guys, this is where it all goes wrong. Fuck. T hits me up. On some, yo, I miss my period. Fuck. She tells me she missed the period. L hits me up, tells, telling me that, yo, I miss my period. Fuck. I fucking have two girls telling me they missed the period a week apart, actually days apart, and I'm stressing the crap out of my life. I'm like, dude, if you know me, you know that I'm anti kids. I don't want kids. Well, not now anyway, but I don't want kids. And I was stressing, yo guys, like yo, 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 flipping hell. I've never stressed so much in my life. I thought I got two girls pregnant at the same time. Why? Because Elle decided to lie to me and tell me that she was on prevention. And then T, yo, but I think, but about things happen. And I thought that I was not gonna smash because we had to get, go test the following morning before we could have sex. So. Everything was unpredictable and I had no control of it, you know, so <sighs> bad decisions, reckless decisions. I mean, I'm full time trash at that point. So anyway, Elle comes to me, hits me up. She's like, yo, dude, two weeks later, here's my period. I am not pregnant. <sighs> Guys, do you know the joy that I felt that day when she told me that? Yo, I was so happy, but I'm still stressing at the same time because at the end of the day, T is also kind of late. Literally the following day, T hits me up. He's like, yo, dude, I had a situation. Now I'm at the hospital, but I'm not pregnant. Apparently, uh, I've been stressing. My blood sugar is low, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I've never stressed so hard in my life. So 
I think now this is like March around my birthday month. So guys, this is me trash level dumping side where I kick it up a notch. It's my birthday month. So both my girlfriends want to hang out with me. Elle decided to move to Brown. I visit her for a couple, I think for like two days. You know, she took care of me. Yo guys, like, yo, Elle was an amazing girlfriend. Elle took good care of me on my birthday. We had a fun time. And then the following weekend, I had to go to Pretoria to go see T and it was dope, fun times. At that point, me and T, shit is going south because the distance factor is kicking in. She's busy, I'm busy, distance as well. So L makes sense to me because she's close. One taxi to get there, one taxi to go back home. So this one time, I'm at L's house, we chilling. So two days, I haven't been on my phone. I've been ignoring my WhatsApps because I'm chilling with L, right? Then this one time, I forget to switch off my phone and then it rings at fucking 4 a.m. Guys, yo, did my life not switch up? Yo, yo, yo. My phone rang. Elle heard it. Uh, she's like, yeah, your hoes are out here calling you at fucking 4 a.m. in the morning. Hey, hey, who's this hoe? Who's this hoe? Uh, trash nigga alert. I lied to my teeth. I was like, that's my mama. She's just checking up where the fuck I am. It's like, you're lying. Your mama's not going to call you at 4 a.m. I'm like, believe whatever you want to believe. You know, ah, then we fight. And then she goes next door because her neighbors were still up. And then she goes, tells them what just happened and how I just lied to her. And then she comes back, plays me fucking lemonade. Imagine, I'm trying to sleep. Bitch, she's playing lemonade. But anyway, so now in the morning I wake up. Ah, it's tense. It's tense, it's tense, it's tense, it's tense in the morning, guys. Tense is in the men's season. It's tense in the morning. We are not talking to each other and I feel like I here we are not talking. So and then I do the trash boy thing again. While she's brushing her teeth, I wake up, take my shit, and then I leave the building unannounced. And then next thing you know, she calls my boy. Also, now I'm looking at your boy. He's out he out she just left because he did some shit yesterday. His phone rang 4 a.m. in the morning, and I'm like looking at him over my balcony. He didn't have the audacity to tell me goodbye. And he's just walking towards the rear via bus stop. Like, your friend is shit, right? And bear in mind, my phone is still off, so she can't, she cannot get a hold of me. Bear in mind, it's still March. Birthday, birthday month. So me and my boy, my boys, decide to go out. Go to the strip club. I think we strip club hopped that night. And then we ended up at my boy's off, uh, job around like 12 a.m. That's when we used to be crazy. Like, people would party and then we'd go to someone's work after that. So they can work. And then my boy sent her a picture of me eating uh, breakfast, dinner uh, on the floor at some office park. And then it was like, yeah, I, know. I found your boyfriend. Here he is. Well, the other girlfriend, I've been neglecting her. And then anyway, fast forward, uh, I switch on my phone. I have to deal with now T. T's on some, yeah, you've been disbanded. And I'm like, girl, I come to Joburg. Then she comes to Joburg to get that cheap place because I don't have money now because I blow my money on my birthday weekend. And then she comes to Joburg, we hang out, we rub one out, and literally that after that, T and I broke up. Guys, T and I broke up, and yeah, that was that. But I still kept L in the loop, you know, I fixed things with L, and then. Uh, yeah, I think me and Elle went like a nice good four months. We were good. We were in good spaces. And I remember this one time on on my WhatsApp, the group chat, one of the guys sent some girls titties that sent those titties to El Tito for his birthday. And who's this? Uh, Elle decided to go through my phone. But how she went through my phone is we had removed my SD memory card and put it into like a bigger one. And we put that into the laptop, right? Into her laptop. And then we started playing my music off the laptop. And then I went to brush my teeth this one morning. And she was like, <laughs> doing the detective thing. <laughs> and she found what she was looking for. She found that girl's titties. And she's like, yeah, bitches are out just sending you titties. Bitches are out just sending titties. Thing is, this was wild for me because the entire time when I was cheating, you didn't catch me. But where I stopped cheating, that's when... You start thinking I'm cheating. It is crazy. It's the craziest thing ever. Elle and I get into a huge fight, but not physical, like verbal fight. And then I lose my patience with her. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I can't do this anymore. Every time you're accusing me of bitches and I'm not doing shit, you know. Ah, Elle switched up on me, guys, and did the craziest thing. She took the key and threw it outside. 
Well, she gave me the illusion that she blew up the keys outside. Now I'm stuck in an apartment. I want to leave because I'm fed up. She's sitting on top of me. She's like, ah, look at our pictures. I'm not going to delete our pictures. You should delete them. And I'm like, yo, these are pictures on your laptop. They're not mine. So do what the fuck you want to do with them. Eventually, she gave in and then allowed me to step out. And that's when I things ended with L. Anyway, fast forward to current days. Um, I recently hung out with T because T is still friends with my friend. And we went out. She's doing well for herself. Big up to her. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure if she, after she heard the story, she would know. Because she never knew that this happened. But yeah. And then as far as Elle, she's also doing good for herself. Uh, she recently just became a mother. So ladies and gentlemen, the lesson that I learned from this. Number one, strap up. Strap the fuck up. Well, people think I'm just out here blabbling strap the fuck up. No, this is where I learned that you need to strap up. That's my lesson. And I don't want you going through what I went through in order to realize that you need to strap up. So, strap up. And another lesson that I learned from this entire experience is two girlfriends is too much work. I cannot date two people at the same time. It's just too much work. It's just too much admin. That's stress. That's the reason when I'm in a relationship, I'm fully in it. But when I'm single, hey man, I play the field hard. Hard. I play the field hard. You know, so yeah. And another lesson that I learned is that long distance does not for me, it could work for someone else, just not for me. Guys, the ultimate lesson out of all this is strap up. Just because a girl tells you she's on prevention does not mean it gives you permission to go rogue. That being said, that is my time. I hope you had a good time listening to my story time. And like I always say, don't forget to take care, treat carefully, choose wisely, and strap the fuck up.